Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now if you've been following our session for the last few weeks, we've been working on creating a brand new easel for our studio, creating a frame, an adjustable frame that we can use for wrapping canvas. And then in the last episode, we did just that. We wrapped some canvas around this frame and here it is now. And as you can see, because it's a bright sunny day outside, the light is actually shining through and that's going to be helpful for helping us understand how to best prep this canvas. It's going to come in handy for what we're doing today. Now, what do we need to do? Well, during the last episode, and by the way, there's a link in the description below if you want to catch up on what we're doing here. In the last episode, what we did is we basically just went out and said, I want to figure out a way to wrap the canvas around this frame. It's tied back in the back here with bolts that are holding it down. And as tight as we try to make it, when you stretch canvas around a frame like this, it's really hard to get it super tight. It's a very challenging process, and frankly, we don't need to worry about it, because what we're about to do next is going to take care of all that. And by that, I mean we're about to put some gesso onto our canvas. So what is gesso? Well, gesso is basically, in this case, it's almost like a very thick white acrylic paint. What makes gesso special is it's also got a very high chalk content in this instance. And what it allows us to do is to paint it onto this bare fabric. I mean, this is just naked textile, if you will. And what we want to be able to do is create a place where the paint can actually stick readily to this surface. And where it is right now, not so much. So by gessoing our canvas, what it's going to allow us to do is going to allow us to create, in essence, a framework, a, you know, a place, a surface where we can paint, and it's going to be very easy to do. And because there's a fair amount of chalk content in here, it does a few things. First of all, it's going to fill in the holes in the canvas for us. But secondarily, it also creates what is known as toothiness. And toothiness is just a way of saying it creates a good surface that paint can stick to. So we're going to make our masterpieces. We don't have to worry about the paint flaking off and falling off the canvas in the future, etc. Now, for a job like this, and again, you'll notice this is a fairly big bucket of gesso because when you're working with big canvases, it's going to take a fair amount to get things covered. Not, you know, we, a bucket like this can probably cover 10 canvases depending on the size it is, so it's not going to take all of it. And in order to do this, I'm just using an old house painting brush. It does not have to be elegant. The objective here is to get as much gesso onto our canvas and kind of mush it into the cracks and the nooks and crannies. And again, because the light is shining through today, we're going to be able to see as we start putting the gesso on here, how it's going to kind of change the light that we see through and how it's going to block it better, and it's going to help us. But the gesso is also going to do something really, really helpful, and that it's going to tighten our canvas up automatically as it starts to dry. So, now by the way, recommendation, again, I'm working inside my studio. I have a drop cloth down underneath my canvas because, yeah, this is a messy process. It's probably not a good idea to wear all your, all your good clothes, but, you know, here we are. I'm doing it for the sake of art, right? So let me, uh, let me get in here and I'm going to start getting uh, my, my gesso ready here. And again, it's just a matter of getting kind of a healthy amount on my brush and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start to smear it in. And what we we're really trying to do, of course, is get full coverage. I want to make sure that this rather thick substance gets spread around. And the objective is to kind of use my brush to push it into the cracks, into the holes in the canvas, so that it can do its job, which is to really block those holes. That's what we're trying to do. So let me uh, work on getting this upper corner. And again, you don't have to worry about too much of what's outside of our painting area. Sometimes what I will do, because I find it makes it a little bit easier from a tightness standpoint, is just to work on the edges as well. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe turn my camera just a wee bit so you can see. Here we are. So over here, I might hit the edge of the canvas, and I'm just getting a fairly generous coating of the gesso onto this surface. And I'm going to go back over the areas I've already gessoed, and I'm going to try to smooth it out as much as I can, because again, I don't want to have a lot of necessary paint lines here as I go through this process. Let me get a little bit more in here. I'm going to do this top quadrant, and I'm going to show you what this is going to mean as we go through this process. It's pretty, pretty cool. And again, I might get a little bit of gesso toward the top here. Just again, I want to prep as much of the canvas as I'm going to end up painting. That's going to be kind of kind of planning ahead for my actual artwork. Get in there. And again, I can see very clearly, because I'm standing right here and see where the sunlight's coming through, it's almost like it's guiding me saying, hey, here's an area you haven't painted yet. 
because uh, I can see light through it. So I'm going to try to block out the light best I can there. And again, let's kind of bring this area. And if you're up close, you're going to be able to see where you've painted and where you haven't, where the gesso's gone in. And I'm going to try to just smooth it out best I can, get some brush strokes going here. Now you may not be able to see it yet, but one of the things that you're going to start noticing as the gesso starts to dry is that this top quadrant here is going to tighten up. What's happening is all that textile, all that fabric underneath is starting to shrink in a little bit. As the gesso dries, what it's going to do is it's going to make this a taut surface. You can kind of see already that compared to this side, which is all loose and floppy, this side is already tightening up. Let's do the other side here and, uh, and see if we can get something that looks a little bit equal across the top here. Yeah, let's just get that gesso on there. All right, and by the way, there's nothing that says you have to do it quadrant by quadrant. What I find is just, it's very interesting to me. If I work on the top half and then the bottom half, I can just see things starting to tighten up up here. So again, I want to hit any of the spots up here where the gesso may not have penetrated the canvas fully, but the overall goal, once again, is to get a good, smooth surface that I can eventually paint on. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm creating basically a, a foundation for my next big masterpiece. So you can also start to see it. It hasn't fully dried, obviously, but up here, the section that we put down first is pretty tight. You can probably see that on the camera. We still have a few wrinkles showing up here because this is still very wet, but again, as the gesso dries, this is going to tighten as well, and those wrinkles will go away, and it will start to smooth out. I'm going to work on the bottom part now. Let's tie everything together. Now, as I'm painting this, one of the things that's happening, of course, is I get lower and lower. I I'm going to have to go scooch down. Wait a second. If only we had a way of raising our canvas up. Hmm. I can raise my canvas and hit the bottom part easily without getting on my knees or crouching down. So, yeah, a lot easier. All right, so a pretty thorough job has been done here, if I don't say so myself. Yeah, you may or so often kind of go in and see that there might be a little places within the canvas where you might want to put a little bit more coat. But as I look through here, there's no big patches of light shining through, which helps guide me, because that means I've already painted over that part of the canvas. And what's going to happen, of course, now that this canvas continues to dry, is it'll get tighter and tighter, and we're going to basically be painting on the surface of a drum, if you think of it that way, when this is ready to go. Now for our next episode, we're going to be working on creating a painting. That's right, we're, we're almost there. We now have a foundation that we can work on, and we're going to be working on creating an abstract piece of art, which is going to explore the use of what we call hard edges. We're going to talk about how we can use different masking techniques to keep the lines that we paint in super clean and crisp, and also create something that's just really fun and bright 
and interesting. That's the objective. So anyway, that will be for next episode, but I'm so glad you joined us for this episode. As we wrap up our easel project, we've been able to create the easel, we've been able to create the frame, we've wrapped the canvas around the frame, and now we have prepped the canvas for final artwork. And by the way, you can do this all on a shoestring budget. It does not take a lot of money to do what we just did. The gesso might be one of the most expensive things. It runs about $20 a gallon, depending on where you buy it. But, you know, it's also the kind of thing that can last you quite a while. So it's not a, it's not a big deal. Uh, but the bottom line is that we have something that's going to be great here. And I'm looking forward to working on future projects with you. Now, again, if you enjoyed what we've done here, please be a subscriber if you're not already. Just hit that link down below and let us know. And every Friday morning when we drop a video, you'll be notified when a new video has dropped and you can be part of our family. And uh, we'll share more arts, uh, tips, tricks, abstract creation, design, fun things with everybody. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks so much for being here. I'll talk to you soon.